everyone! So art supplies can get pretty expensive, especially if you're just starting out and you don't really know what you need to buy or don't need to buy. So today I want to share some of my top tips of how to save money while painting, as well as some cheaper or even free alternatives to your art supplies. Now if you don't know what kind of paint you want to get, I've made a couple videos that could be pretty helpful. One is about the differences between oil and acrylic paint, another is about the difference between cheaper student grade paints and the more expensive artist grade paints, as well as the comparison between different brands within acrylic paint. So if you haven't seen those videos, check them out to determine what type of paint you should buy first. I'm going to be talking about acrylic paint specifically because there's less materials that you need, it's a little bit cheaper, and it's a little bit more beginner friendly. If you're just starting out, I recommend getting a smaller tube. This one's my personal favorite, Golden Acrylics. They're very smooth and buttery and very pigmented. I recommend starting off with the basic set of these smaller tubes so that you get a feel of what you like or don't like about this paint or what colors you use more, especially with the differences between brands of paint. You won't really know if you like it until you try it out. And after trying it, you know you actually like it, then you can invest in a bigger tube. So if you do go with a smaller tube of artist grade paint like this, this one is two ounces. As long as you don't paint like huge canvases, this will actually last you a really long time. And if you don't use a certain color very often, then maybe you could just get by with just this tiny one and you don't have to invest in a bigger one until much, much later. Dollar per ounce, it will be cheaper to get a bigger tube, but it's a lot of money to invest at once so if you go with these smaller tubes at first and then upgrade when you run out you'll spread the cost over time so it's a little bit easier for your wallet and be smart about the colors you buy like if you already have cadmium red and cadmium yellow maybe you don't need a cadmium orange by the way I do want to make a video about the sort of essential colors to buy like if you don't have any colors at all, what are the colors you should get in your initial kit? So if you want to see that video, let me know in the comment section below. So next let's talk about water containers. Now acrylic paint, all you need is water and you're pretty much set. And you probably don't want to buy them in an art supply store because this one you can get for free when your roommate finishes a jar of whatever used to be in here. Just clean out the jar so there's no greasy residue that will damage your brushes um, and you could use it as a water jar and that's it. It's really simple, it's hard to go wrong here. Pretty much anything will work as long as it contained water or liquid okay. I've used everything from a glass jar to a plastic cup or a paper cup. I've cut off the top of water bottles. I've used Pringle cans. So pretty much anything can work here. Just reuse your trash, basically. Now let's talk about brushes. You can get really cheap brush sets online. Just make sure to get a variety of shapes and sizes so that you get a feel of what you gravitate towards. If you know what you like, then only buy the ones you like. The easiest way to save money on brushes is to actually take really good care of them. As long as you clean them properly, store them properly, take care of them, they will last a really long time. And I've already made a video about how to clean and store your brushes, so check out that video. Just take care of your brushes and they'll take care of your wallet. Another thing is you can get these really cheap bristle brushes. Pretty much in the hardware store, you can get like a pack of five of them for, I don't know, $3 or something like that. These are great if you're working with larger surfaces or gessoing your surface. Especially for gesso, it can be kind of hard to wash it out completely really well. So if you use it a couple times for gessoing and it just gets crusty because gesso is just really sticky, you don't feel bad about throwing it out if you need to. So another tool besides your brushes is a palette knife. Now you don't want to mix paint with brushes because that can damage the brushes and not mix very well at all. What you really want is a palette knife so that you can mix your paint really smoothly and thoroughly. As opposed to getting those really nice metal ones, what you can actually get is one that is plastic. And this is one that I had for a really long time. As you can tell from the paint, I especially really like to use it when I'm outside because then if I drop it or whatever it flies off the hill, I don't feel too bad about losing it and once in a while I'll just take a razor blade and scrape off the excess paint, especially for acrylic paint it'll scrape off very easily. Another even cheaper alternative, maybe free if you go to the food court, is to use a plastic knife. Now it doesn't have the little bend here that makes it really nice for just smoothing out your paint really easily. This one will feel a little bit more like spreading 
melting butter when you use it. Unless you're actually painting with a palette knife, you don't really need this particular shape. You can just get away with this. Just all you have to do is stir your paint together um, and it'll pretty much look the same thing. It'll get the job done. You might need to stir a little bit longer, but you know, it works perfectly fine. Next, let's talk about palettes. Do you really need to buy those fancy smancy palettes that you see a stereotypical painter holding? I would say you could probably get away with not buying one. All you pretty much need is a non-porous surface that doesn't suck the moisture out of paint. After that, all you need to consider is the size that you need, depending on the number of colors you use, how large is the surface you're using, how much paint do you put on your palette at once. Anything from a paper plate will do. This is one that has those waxy surfaces so that it won't suck up all the water. There's also these called disposable palette papers. Um, it's pretty much like a notebook where you have pages and this is sort of a waxy paper that you can put paint on and once you're done, you just tear it off and go to the next page. I've mentioned before that I even like storing my paint into Tupperware because I work on really large surfaces and I use a ton of paint at once. So that helps keep my paint wet for a little bit longer. It can even be as simple as a piece of cardboard covered with wax paper, parchment paper, foil, saran wrap. Pretty much any of those would probably work. A unwanted piece of glass will work really well, especially for oil paint. Just be a little bit creative and reuse the materials around you. So those are some of my tips. Most of them are just reusing materials that you already have or can find easily. Let me know in the comment section below what are your best tips for saving money in painting. I think it would be really cool to just share our tips and help each other out. I'll link all the relevant videos in the description bar below and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. So let's start off with the most important ingre ingredient. <laughs> now that- ooh.